Still to this day, one of my favorite cameras I've ever used is the Canon C100 Mark II. Now, you may say, Brian, you already did a review of this camera. Brian, this camera is eight years old. That's practically ancient in camera years. Brian, you told me that anything that can't shoot 4K 60 frames per second is not worth it in 2023. Why are you obsessed with this camera? Well, look, I could sit here all day and talk about the next greatest mirrorless camera out there, but honestly, I still don't think any of them compare to the experience I've had with this camera. As far as my last video on this camera, that was two years ago and a lot has changed since then. And yes, this camera is close to applying for its AARP card, but I would still argue that this camera is still one of my best camera purchases I've ever made. But would I still buy it in 2023? Now that might be a different story. Over my six years of ownership of this camera, I filmed countless weddings, CK Productions videos, my original channel, and if you're not a subscriber, go and fix that now, and many personal projects as well. While I've used many DSLRs, mirrorless cameras from many different brands, still, it's just never felt the same as shooting on a camera like this, and a camera like this being a cinema camera. I do photo and video, but I've always been video first. And most of the video that I do falls under not videography, but cinematography. I am a filmmaker at heart. And so all the work that I do, I want it to feel and look like a film. And obviously these smaller form cameras can do that. And they do that really well. But unlike these cameras, these smaller cameras are just not built for that sole purpose alone. Hi, Mooney. What you doing, Mooney? <laughs> what you doing, Mooney? Hello? What you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, Mooney? The Canon C100 Mark II falls under Canon's C-series cameras, which the C stands for cinema. All these cameras from the C100, C200, C300, and so on, have all built with cinematography as the main focus. <laughs> Get it? focus because it's, you know, cinematography. <sighs> what you find on these cameras are a variety of built-in tools that you won't find built in to a mirrorless camera or a DSLR. These are tools that make your filmmaking experience just so much better. And that's where this camera shines. My personal favorite tools are the built-in ND filters, the zebras, the focus peaking, and of course, the built-in XLR ports. These are all features that would be add-ons to mirrorless cameras, but you get them right out of the box here. Plus the size of this camera is so much more conducive to traditional filmmaking. You can quickly set up this camera in a variety of different shooting angles and can hold it easily handheld without it being too shaky. Oh my gosh. Hey, sorry, had to uh, fix my light there for a moment. Almost got knocked down by a cat. And one of the huge strengths of this camera is its battery life. These hefty batteries will last you hours, even with continuous recording. Rarely do I ever have to bring more than like two of these to a shoot. It's just one less thing to think about and makes the process of filming with this camera more enjoyable. And the best part of it all is you get beautiful Canon C-Log with this footage. Obviously, a lot of cameras have this now. Pretty much all cameras have some type of film log, but there's something about Canons that I've just always enjoyed over the others. Now, why was this camera not the first pick of all filmmakers during its prime? It's because it came out in a time where mirrorless cameras were booming. These smaller, easier to use versions of DSLRs came out and everyone wanted to get their hands on them. And frankly, a lot of their specs outweighed what you could get on this camera. And the addition of electronic stabilizers were huge for smaller mirrorless cameras. They honestly were a big game changer. To get stabilized, smooth moving shots for the camera like this seven or eight years ago would require some really expensive and honestly finicky equipment to work with. And plus, who wouldn't want a camera that can shoot amazing photography too? Can't do that with this. Obviously the biggest drawback of this camera is that it doesn't have a true 4K output. What it does have to slightly make up for that is that it has a 4K sensor. It just downscales that 4K to an HD output. As much as this has been a bummer, it actually has benefited my video work in some ways. The file sizes are surprisingly minuscule with this camera. I can shoot an entire wedding on just one card 
shooting in 60 frames per second all day, I could punch out videos. <laughs> punch out really quickly and very easily. What people do complain about this camera though is that it does output an internal pretty compressed image. What it does do to combat this is it has a few different recording options. You can output a clean ProRes image from this camera using an external recorder. If this setup works for you, honestly, it's the ideal way to use this camera. So now in 2023, does this camera stack up to the competition? Honestly, probably not. I'm usually a big proponent of this camera and I usually can also see the value in older gear, but I gotta be honest this time, I'm just not super convinced anymore. If I didn't have this camera already, oh, hi, hello. Goodbye. If I did not already have this camera ready, I wouldn't purchase it. The only reason I am still using it is because I already have it. In fact, you can't actually buy a new model of this camera anymore. You can only buy it used or refurbished. You know, that should be kind of the biggest sign for you. Standing by my statement I said in previous videos, it's just not worth getting a camera that does not have 4K capabilities in 2023. If you really like this model of the camera like I do, I would actually suggest going with the C200 instead. The price of that camera has dropped a good amount, making it about the same price that I originally purchased this camera. And it's practically the same camera, just slightly bigger and obviously has 4K output. But a big bonus to that camera, it also has 4K RAW, which I've used and is super high quality. This will hold you over until inevitably 8K becomes the norm for most cameras. Now, does this mean I'm going to ditch my beloved camera for an upgrade? Probably not right now. If you already have a C100, I consider holding on to yours as well. This camera just works. It works for everything I need it to. And the output is just fine for what I use it for. And for jobs, when I do need that true 4K output, I have other options in my camera lineup for that. In conclusion, this camera has served filmmakers well. It served me well, but frankly, it's not worth buying in 2023. If you already own this camera, you're probably fine keeping it, but if you don't own another camera that can shoot 4K, you're gonna be lagging behind everyone else. I would at least suggest recording with an external recorder if you can. This type of camera is not for everyone. It doesn't fall in line with the popular mirrorless cameras, but I think that a cinema camera puts you in the best place to succeed right out of the box and gives you the opportunity to produce even higher level work than a mirrorless camera can if you know what you're doing. So if you're serious about filmmaking, if you're serious about getting higher paid client work, a cinema camera is definitely worth the investment. Maybe not this one though.